Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's June 2nd, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. Starting in Michigan, Brightmark RNG Holdings is expanding its renewable natural gas production with five new anaerobic digestion dairy farm projects in western Michigan. This RNG program is designed to convert animal waste to renewable fuels, and Brightmark is working in a joint venture with Chevron USA, a part of Chevron Corps. Called the Castor Project, three Western Michigan farms each have signed supply agreements indicating their intent to provide the company with dairy manure from their herds that will serve as feedstock for the new digesters to be built on Beaver Creek Farm in Coopersville. The digesters will capture, extract, and clean the methane in the manure, converting it into renewable natural gas and injecting it into a nearby gas pipeline. CEO of Brightmark Bob Powell said, quote, We're excited to work with our partner Chevron and farmers in Michigan to progress the development of our RNG projects, which are designed to drive both lower carbon intensity outcomes for organic waste and investments in local farmers and their surrounding communities supporting lower carbon solutions, end quote. The net reduction of greenhouse gas emissions from the manure processed at anaerobic digestion farms in Michigan is equivalent to planting more than 179,000 acres of forest each year. Additionally, these projects are expected to reduce land application of raw manure, improving odor, water quality, and nutrient management practices at farms. Now a quick headline out of Pennsylvania. The city of York is trying to eliminate all plastic waste by teaming up with a local company and officials are coming up with more ways to get the community involved. York Mayor Michael Helfrich said this is a goal decades in the making and with this partnership he says this is not just protecting the environment, it is making the city better too. Saying quote, the city of York's goal is to be America's first plastic waste-free city, end quote. The company working with York in this endeavor is the Center for Regenerative Design and Collaboration, the company that created the Bag That Builds program from 2022. The company is able to take plastic waste and turn it into a sand-like material, which is then reused in new products from car bumpers to coolers and kiddie pools. And staying with plastics a little while longer, Dow and New Energy Blue announced this past week a long-term supply agreement in North America in which New Energy Blue will create bio-based ethylene from renewable agricultural residues. Dow expects to purchase this bio-based ethylene, reducing carbon emissions from plastic production and using it in recyclable applications across transportation, footwear, and packaging. Dow's agreement with New Energy Blue, staffed by experts with deep experience in bioconversion ventures, is the first agreement in North America to generate plastic source material from corn stover, aka the stalks and leaves. This is also Dow's first agreement in North America to utilize agriculture residues for plastic production. Dow's president of packaging and specialty products, Karen Carter, said, quote, We are unlocking the value of agriculture residues in this new partnership with New Energy Blue. By committing to purchase their bio-based ethylene, we are helping to enable innovations in waste recycling, meeting demands for bio-based plastics from customers, and strengthening an ecosystem for diverse and renewable solutions, end quote. And just a reminder, Recyclist is brought to you by Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or call them at 321-223-7500. Now on with the news.
company Total Energies and Belgian startup Tree Energy Solutions have announced plans to collaborate on a synthetic natural gas plant to be built in the U.S. The plant will use so-called green hydrogen and carbon dioxide to produce a methane-like gas which can be burnt as fuel. The project is expected to produce 100,000 to 200,000 metric tons of synthetic natural gas per year. The project is awaiting final investment decision due to take place in 2024. The European companies will build the plant in the U.S., most likely in Texas, according to Marco Alvera, CEO of Tree Energy Solutions. Similar synthetic gas projects are underway elsewhere. Last year, Tokyo Gas piloted a small-scale project in Japan, and French utility Angie injected synthetic gas into the French gas distribution network. Now moving to Vermont, the St. Albans Town Industrial Plant will be growing this summer with the addition of a new $18 million biogas facility built by Purpose Energy. Partnering with Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream to construct the processing plant, the company builds biogas digesters that can take organic waste and transform it into electrical energy. In this case, industrial food waste is going to be literally piped in from Ben and Jerry's plant, then a mix of bacteria process it to create gases, which are then burnt to generate electricity. Sean O'Neill, vice president of development, said, quote, Working on climate justice initiatives is an effort that requires all businesses like Ben and Jerry's to step up and play a part if we truly want to implement impactful and meaningful change, end quote. O'Neill said construction on the facility has begun, and if everything moves forward as expected, the facility will be ready for production by the end of 2024. Next, if you're someone who happens to invest in renewable natural gas projects, Reno County in Kansas is looking to sell their landfill gas. The county is asking for proposals from companies to utilize the landfill gas that is generated from Reno County Landfill. The commissioners approved the plan this past Tuesday. The county hopes this will be a win-win situation with the landfill complying with state and federal requirements and end user benefiting from the landfill gas and the county benefiting from the revenue in sales. Between sites A through E, the landfill currently has about 6 million tons of waste. Site D has approximately 8 million tons of remaining capacity as of January of this year. The annual tonnage typically ranges around 150,000 tons per year. Gas wells are located at sites A through D, and according to the landfill, gas composition has averaged 43% methane, 34% carbon dioxide, 2% oxygen, and 21% balanced gas during 2022. And we're ending on an adorable story coming out of Chicago, where Glen Ellen Park District has just opened the first playground made from recycled ocean waste. The district opened the new eco-friendly playground at 483 Fairview Avenue, made from recycled materials including textiles and plastic bags, in addition to the previously mentioned ocean waste. The equipment came from the manufacturing company Compan, which gives new life to materials and reduces carbon emissions. The playground includes towers, slides, swings, climbing blocks, and other features. The last renovation to the park happened in 1993 with more upgrades coming to the park's outdoor pool area. Those renovations are expected to start this August. And that has been your Recyclist News Update for June 2nd, 2023. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and we'll see you back here next week for another episode of Recyclist. Thank you.